is like this. I become other than God, like a human being, and I punish myself. No, and that's how, that's, that's how I can save you. The so they say the Christian God concept is this. God incarnated part of him, I'm using the part loosely, a person of him called Christ, the second member of the Trinity. He became, and he, the word became flesh, John says. He took in a human flesh, so he became part of a human body and became a human body. And he was punished. The whole idea that human beings were wicked and God couldn't forgive them, the only way to forgive is by punishing himself doesn't make any sense. So it Christian theology... Sense. Are you saying that if the Bible does prove... <coughs> Sorry? Are you saying then that the Bible does prove... The Bible teaches. nowhere teaches this concept that God is three in one in the entirety you that of... said God became flesh? No, John says the Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then later on says, and the Word became flesh. That's what John one one John, John says that, but the problem with this belief system by of John the author, John talks about a belief in two gods. The God, I'll explain to you why this John believes in two gods, a binitarian belief system. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with who? God, and the Word was what? God. So the Word which was God was with God. So how many gods was it? One. Two gods. The word which is God was with God. There's two gods. So that is why theology of John from the very beginning gives you binitarian God. And you would say it doesn't make sense to believe in two gods because because God is only one. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? The Christian Trinitarians, they themselves know that in 1 John 17 3, Jesus is saying himself as reported in that particular passage. He says, this is eternal life, that they should know you, the Father, is the only true God Not and Allah, Jesus Christ, Christ the Father, whom you have God. sent. Now, now according, to, according to Christ, according to Christ, he identified who is the only true God, not only God, not only God, not only true God, but only true God. So let me ask you this question to you, my friend. According to your belief, who is the only true God? The Father. The Father, yeah. That's not it? Allah. You would refer to him as Allah, but I would, I would call him God. If, if the Father is the her, only true... Her culture would call him Eel. Good, good. If the Father is the only true God, there cannot be anyone else who's the true God, right? Sure. Exactly. That means Jesus and the Holy Spirit cannot be in any way, shape or form, true gods. Because you said Father exclusively is the only true God. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, once again, I feel that we're just getting into an analytical debate. And elects any spirit. Now, what point like, do you what, disagree what with? You, no, no, but I'm not even. I'm, I don't even care about agreeing or disagreeing. What point do you disagree with? What I just what said. What I what I don't feel is any form of love or spirit with what you're saying. None of it. I don't. The I reason don't, I'm speaking to you is because of my love towards you. I just don't. I, just, I would have just walked away. No, but no, I'm but spending I mean, time with you. No try to reason with well. you. But this is. Lies and love don't go together. This is. <laughs> you know what? Okay, let me reason, with you. my friend. God is one and not Christ and not the Father, not the Holy Spirit. Right. I tell you with all my love, accept it. In the Quran, I accept whatever you want to like. I'm telling you, whatever. with all my love, I'm telling you, accept Islam, become a Muslim it's and you'll be safe. Allah ego. is it's not ego. a true it's God. It's ego, Do I need to now reason with you? Are you, are you happy with that? I'm telling you, with all my heart and mind, become a Muslim Look, and accept Islam. I will tell you this now, brother. If, if I genuinely felt Holy spirit in what you're Holy saying to me, I would giver. probably do what you just asked me to do. But I don't right now. I don't feel any of it. Okay. So if somebody said, with all their heart and mind, accept this umbrella as God, you'll accept it? You're going to be Christian one day. Look, but once again. With love. Can I, can I answer that question? Yeah, can with, I, can I, and, can I hear this love, answer? If you offer. If, if I offer. If you offer. Believe this love. is God. No, if you if you genuinely offer with love, yeah. what what I was taught is you offer with both hands, not expecting the person to actually take it. It's what you give. Yeah. Whether the regardless of whether the person accepts it or not, 
you've given it what's mine, that's all that matters. Fine. If I offer you this umbrella to be worthy of, for you to worship, worship this umbrella with all my heart and my mind and my soul, would you say, if I saw, show, if, if I seen sincerity and spirit and love, you'll really believe this is God? You're speaking to the man right now. Like you're not I'm asking you. you I want to differentiate me. between sincerity. If I sincerely said, believe this is God Almighty, and I showed you, I really mean it. Right. And you'd believe this is God? Look, I mean, I don't expect everyone to have the same understanding. No, no I want to know from you. Yeah, yeah. Would you really believe? Once you find out that I really mean it. I really mean it. And I said, this is God that you should believe in, me, and you'd accept, and you'd accept this it? this is the purpose of the Holy Spirit. No, would you accept it? Would you truth. accept this to be, to be to true then? reveal that truth. Would you accept that this is true God then? Would you? What you're saying to me doesn't resonate. The lady wouldn't. She disagrees with you. She would not accept this to be God Almighty. Well, you're actually... Would you? Okay, would you? Oh, you're, you you're asking me as a man, not as a spirit. I would as a spirit, can I ask you? I, I would you accept this to be I God? I would have to feel it for myself to accept it. So, I would accept it so, just because you told me to If you feel it. the vibe that I'm being truthful and being sincere and being passionate, you would really accept this to be God. Look, this is what you're telling me to. Is accept. that what you're telling me? What you're telling me to. Accept Sorry, one right second, now. one second. I just want to listen, and then now I'll speak to you. Just an answer from her. Would you really believe this is God? <coughs> but you're like totally making. No, I want to know. What do you use to accept something to be true or not? Are you using your God-given intellect, or are you using your emotions and your spirit? So with your spiritual connection. She's using absolutely both. Excellent. Now we get somewhere. We need to use both. I was using reason, analytics, yeah, right. reason right. to demonstrate why polytheism is not believable, why Christian trinitary, zero tri spirit, tri tri zero spirit trinitary is not believable. Look, if you become a Muslim, you find so much peace in your heart, sure so would. much tranquility I'm, I'm in your heart. Lying. Yep, I'm actually so, sure I would. Like, yeah. I agree so, with so, you. so this is what I'm telling you. Try Islam, try Islam, become a Muslim. That's what Allah does. Practice Islam, practice charity, practice prayer, practice kindness, practice truthfulness, practice fairness, practice justice. And once you realize all of this really is heart touching, then perhaps you would say, yeah, Islam is for me. Yeah. Shall we leave it there? But I will say this. I say this with the, the most respect for me. Nothing about what you say to me and how you're saying it emulates anything that I would want to replicate in my own life. And I say that with full love and no offense intended. But you're not. What would I have said instead? Tell me. Give me an example. How would I have made sure that I would have connected with you? None of what you just said to me is. No, no. How would I have connected? Not what I have not connected with. To genuinely show that you wanted to learn something. With this not learning, not learning. You wanted to teach something. To share you with you, to, to offer you. Yeah. My friend, my friend. I mean, is that true? You, you misunderstood me again. If I want to offer you the truth, tell me, teach me rather, how would I have offered you, shared with you, with love, this truth? This is this is where we are. We because you disagree, right? So no, now why no, don't no. you tell me? Don't. Next time, I would really try to use use this method and approach to connect with people. I am not that, um, what's it called, arrogant. I, I can change. So now, why don't you kindly tell me the things that you saw missing in me, how would I have offered the truth of Islam to connect to people so that they are being recipient of it? So give me some pointers. Okay. For me personally, and this is like bringing the, the Holy Spirit into the equation, okay, is to recognize that actually I'm not the teacher. Right? All I have is a message. Whether you accept it, up to you. Whether you are able to receive that message, completely up to you. This is the purpose of the Holy Spirit for me. I agree with and you. This is what we're this doing. Is, this is I'm not forcing my belief on you. No, no, but this is the disconnect for me, is that you are a very learned man. Okay, you're a very no, about this much. But compared to me, Nothing. you are. Compared to her, you are. You're a learned man and you're trying to teach me with learned thoughts, not trying to teach you with a spirit. How? And it misses. It just, you're it just, telling me what I haven't done. How should I have done? I just Give me an example. I How should I have done? For example, now, imagine now you're the Muslim guy, the Muslim person. Now tell me, how would you approach me and offer me this truth of Islam? 
okay, if I would have done it, yeah. I would have probably said 10 words Something to your 100 words. Okay. I would have stood here and listened to you. And I would have learned who the person was. Okay? That's what I would have done. I wouldn't have tried to speak to you and tell you that I knew more than you did. Have I ever made a arrogant claim I know more than you? How? By telling you, firstly, I've told you multiple times. I don't believe in the God. Neither do my I. God is heal. Neither do I believe in your God. So we are on the same no, level. I'm not saying my God. I said a God. I believe in a higher being. And but where did I take you from there? There has to be a creator of this universe. We actually went through all this with reasoning. I developed the reasoning between ourselves, our human reason, saying this universe demonstrates there has to be a creator. And I then explained to you why there has to be one creator rather than many. So this is something that was a shared learning for both of us. So we engage in, an, in, in, in a journey in exploring our reality. I wasn't undermining you, neither you were undermining me. But well, we agreed I, to in this process. I feel like with my culture anyway, how I said there were multiple gods. Those gods in our culture aren't classed as gods creators. They're classed as gods prophets mm. of Eeyore. So Eeyore, then the gods prophets. Um, they're not necessarily the leaders of the people, but again, that's where, you know, I feel like you didn't intend on actually listening, but also talking. And then it got to the point where it felt like you're trying to convert. You see, can I, I, can I just say one thing? Your description that you've given about these people or these deities or gods, I took them on the face body that you said, and I said, they but cannot that was be without any context as well. No, that no. Was just taking it at face. This, this, face this gods, they cannot be absolute. This is the point I was making. They all cannot be absolute. Can I? Because there cannot be more than one absolute. But what's your conviction on that? Like what's your? Can there be more than one absolute gods in your belief? Again, that's your belief. Okay, system. in your belief. And it feels like you're trying no. to convert me to your belief. I, I want to understand something. Well, yeah, it was, in your you belief. If you if you follow uh, if you follow. No, no. Correct um, me. Correct me. If you, in your belief you your of multiple kindness, deities. If you live your life of truth, depending on what. No, that's of because truth is. he wanted to have give that approach, and I gave you that, and you still don't want to take it. No problem. Uh, I said. In your belief of multiple deities, multiple gods, do you believe they are absolute in their attributes, in their essence, in their nature? Right, let me pull back. Excuse me. This 100 lady. words to about 10 words. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Like, same thing. Good. Just Got you. the same argument what I was so just saying. So, the same point I'm asking now. In your belief about multiple gods that you think I have engaged with, let me clarify then from my understanding. Do you believe there are more than one absolute God in this many deities. He doesn't even know if there's one God. Sorry? He doesn't even know for himself that there's one God. You said you come from a cultural belief system in which there are many gods. Yeah, but that doesn't yeah. say what she believes. That's She's what, saying what her that, culture I believes. I said what my culture believes. Again, taking right. it back to... And then what did you say? You believe in a higher God. being? A higher being. Good. And what did I take from there? There can only be one higher being. One absolute higher being. She doesn't even know that. Like she's. No, no, no. The, one second, one the second, one second. There's the conversation. Can there be more than one higher being? <laughs> like, let's establish that. Directed can there the be Directed more than one higher being? I can, like I said, I can't agree nor, nor disagree. And that's exactly that's what Quran, you told you me. Can there be more than one higher no. being? Read, that's correct. Can there be? Sorry, well, we like send I said, devils. I asked you. Allah sends but I want to learn from you. Quran. I know, but just let me speak. Go ahead. Go ahead. If you want to learn, then pay Go ahead. Go ahead. You asked me, well, I asked you, or told you, I can't agree nor disagree with anything that you're saying because I myself don't believe in anything entirely. So I don't, I'm not a Muslim, not a Christian, not a, not a Catholic, you know. I know what my culture believes in, but I don't practice it myself. Okay. So, I so we're not dealing say, with your culture, we're dealing with what you believe in. But my culture is, exactly, and that's exactly my point is. Can we not I, talk about what you believe in? That's exactly my point. You believe in a higher being. You're asking her to talk with certainty. Do you, do you, do you, do you believe in a higher being or do you just think there's a higher being? I, I, I believe for myself that there's a higher being. For yourself. So she is certain for herself. 
So sometimes you need to speak for your own self and not speak on her behalf. No, but I'm, I'm talking but about the discussion. No, no, I'm hours, saying sometimes hours. we need to let other people to hold their own belief rather than speaking on their behalf. Yeah, this forcing, is a clear demonstration. Listen, you're forcing but you're, you're, out of her. you're trying to get me to agree or disagree no, no. with something that I don't From agree. what you believe. Look, look, I'm not going to tell you what to believe. I'm asking what you believe. I'm not, tell I'm not saying you're telling me what to believe. I'm saying you're asking me to agree or disagree. No, no. You can I, 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 I will explain again. Can I ask a question first? Whatever you believe, Come on, you, man. in your oh, personal belief, do you believe in the existence of a higher being? He's sticking out of Can I ask this question first? I just want to state it to help her yeah. with this question. Yeah. So if, I, if I said to you, I don't know. I truly don't know. Would that answer suffice? We know Google. Yeah. Google. Do you believe personally in the existence of a higher being? I believe in a higher being. Good. So this is irrelevant. So she does believe in a higher being. Can I can I ask you further questions? I'm not calling that higher being God. No, no, no. I'm not saying that you are. But I'm not saying that higher. I'm not saying that higher being is my creator. I'm not saying that higher being is who I should Can I can I ask you then? My further follow up. Myself. Okay, can I ask you a further following question from there? This whether they think it's an this, energy guys, this or age, whether it's a human or okay. I, that's the most I'm not identifying it by a physical or energy that's present. This higher being, do you believe this higher being is the cause of our universe's existence? It's a manipulation. Come on. Okay. So, what's the relationship with the universe and this higher being? Good, no problem. Who created this universe? Again, I do not know. Okay. Is it possible the universe could have been simply there or created by nothingness? Well, it depends on what point of view you come from, really. Hmm? Some people, some people... No, you, 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 from you. From your understanding, the knowledge, the experience that you have, this universe, could it just come by itself from nothingness? Or was it always there? <coughs> or did someone create it? Well, I, I can't say that someone created it. Like I said, I believe that there is a higher being that exists. So you don't know about the relationship between this universe and that higher being. So let's not leave the higher being aside. This universe that we're talking about, which is real, is external to us, we can observe it. This universe either came from absolute nothing or it was always they didn't come from anywhere or it was brought into existence by something or someone or some ones in multiples these are possible alternatives which one would you say is worthy of consideration good let's take the position of this universe came from absolute nothing so there was absolute nothing at one point there was nothing no energy no higher beings nothing Up Absolutely nothing. Can anything come out of this nothing? If there was a point when there was absolute nothingness, nothing, no energy, no power, no matter, no gods, no higher beings, no humans, simply nothing, no laws, no potentiality. It's simply absence of everything. From that state, can you get something out of it? Can something arise from it? Can a universe come out of it? How? There was nothing. Nothing. You get nothing from nothing. How can you get something from nothing? You can. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. You don't have to be a scientist. You don't have to be a historian. This is common sense. This is one thing that you have. How do you know that nothing can come of nothing? How are you so sure of it? Sure. Nothing is the absence of anything. So it cannot do anything. But if how, I, do you, how do you know? Because from our everyday experience, when we understand our reality, this is what we see. Nothingness cannot do anything. If I wrote the word nothing on my hand, and I said, this word nothing made that building over there, you'd be laughing at me. you say, how can this word nothing make this building? It cannot do anything. Actually, well, nothing was be before laughing. your hand. But you would not believe. Because again, you would not believe in it. Again, it depends on what angle so you'd believe this word nothing made this well, building? it depends on what angle you're taking that from. No, I'm because saying somebody... that building was made by this word. This word was the manufacturer, the builder. 
can I, can I stop you there? I just want to ask. You could. No, 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 listen. You could. Depends uh, on what angle you're looking at. I just want to ask what you're trying to achieve. Is this how? Uh, one second, brother. One I just second. want to ask what you're trying to what, achieve. What, one second. One no, second. No, no, no. I will tell you. I will tell you. What, be patient. Well, I will tell there. you. Get there now. Get Why are you being so aggressive now? Because. Can we finish this discussion? You're kind of bullying her. You're kind of bullying her. Can we finish this discussion? I don't right. actually know what you're trying to achieve. If you don't want to continue the discussion, we leave it. Because now I find that your friend is a bit offended. It's my because partner. No, it's, it's my partner. I apologize if your partner. You felt. I'm not if you felt. If you felt. I don't know what you're trying to achieve. I am trying to reason so, mate, look, your with her. Pointing her as the, as the, as the thing Did we not say achieve? not to no, record he her? Brian, Brian, he mentioned, he mentioned. Not Brian. to record her? Be <laughs> but I'm saying, as the purpose to make her look stupid. No, the purpose oh. is to reason. Then get to and the point of being what you're trying to get okay. to. Okay, the point is this. Because you're doing exactly what I said. I'll tell you what, and I'll end this discussion. Because Brian, it's fine. if you right. find this discussion is Brian. really, you know, I'm, I'm getting on your partner. Right. And first no, no, of all, fine. look, look. Fine. That's fine. Number one, I'm I apologize. I am, I am Number fine. two, it was not intentional. Number three, we should end this discussion. Why? Because it's getting emotional now. No, it's no, no longer no. in the realms of reason. I'm actually intellectual oh, discussion Brian, Brian. is that, where that we try to stimulate our more. brains. Buddy, buddy, buddy. Reason doesn't reason doesn't occur when one person has to yell louder than the other to get a point across. Brother, I'm not yelling. No, but you are far more. This is my voice. More convicting than what she is right now. She has like two seconds to speak to every ten, ten that you have. Okay, like, so you 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 you're finding it. If I were to explain, look, the one who explains, they explain. Ask a question, back off, let her answer. Ask a question, let her back off. Answer. Okay. Like you, okay. all you're doing is prophesying. All you do is a proclaiming your message. You're not actually if, trying to if, learn from her. Look, look. Once again, if this is, how, doing if, if this is how you feel, okay. And that's what you're doing wrong. Do you agree you're with the partner listening. that we can get something from nothing? I do not. No. Do you want to ask him why we can't get something from nothing? Well, because I believe in a God. I believe this, this was all I'm not created. talking about God. There was no question of gods in here. It's about something and nothing. But that's where this whole conversation starts. No, I'm talking to you about why nothingness cannot originate this universe which is something. You said it's possible. So I would like to know, because your partner agrees with me here, so perhaps you can ask your partner to explain to you. I said it's possible. I well, can said I, it could. Can I, can, I bring some, can I bring some context into it? Mean, yeah. Like, first of all, I'm only heated because you're not giving her a chance, okay? So if you step up on her, I step okay. up on you. Okay, I explain. That's okay. How that works. Explain how completely, you can get something from nothing. I'm completely... Good, I got your point there. Saying, More time to explain, go ahead. The second point of the, the conversation that I'm trying to point out here is you've got two conflicting things here. You've got this religious context, okay? Mm -hmm. And then this modern conversation that we're having is of colonization, how religion has become a colonization tool, okay? She comes from an indigenous culture, it just so happens that they acknowledge multiple gods, okay? Does she believe in those multiple gods? Probably not. Okay. Okay, but do they have a real use case in their culture? Yes, they do. You know, one is to do with planting, one is to do with the ocean, one is to do with the weather, one is to do with the stars. Nature worship kind of thing. Pretty much, right? It has a real life working case scenario. I've watched okay, Moana. you got to ask the conflicting question. It's like, okay, does this one monolithic God contradict your indigenous belief of having multiple gods? I was questioning the very concept of multiple gods. Yeah, but for her... Is that not questionable? No, is that what you're saying? It is questionable. Good. So that's why I was trying to engage with you. How do you see the concept of multiple gods? Is it reasonable? Is it believable? And I gave you, for you to reason with me, some pointers in which why the existence of multiple gods is not reasonable and it's not believable. You could come back and say, no, I disagree with you based on X, Y, and Z. Yes, there can be multiple gods and they can be reasonable, they can be believable. I, it's not something that I'm not asking you not to come back. But you seem to have agreed with me that yes, there is conflict of will. That's why there can only be one absolute God, one absolute being, a higher being. And then you are backtracking a little bit 
with the higher being is. You're saying you don't even know the relation between the higher being and the universe. So we come back to this universe, which we both agree with. Well, that's not fact checking. That's still, you're still able to acknowledge something without actually knowing the existence of that. That being. Fine, but that no, being, like, there has, like, has to be a relationship. It's like a, it's like a relationship where a mother and father, father leaves. You know you've got a father. Yeah. Don't know where he comes from. Don't know. Don't know who he is. You just with me. It's it's the same context. I know that there's high being. Don't know where he comes from. Don't know who created him. Hey, hold on. We stood for him. He came after him. Hey, what? Hey, what? Hey, okay. So what's the relationship between this higher being? and this creation because we want to know who created this creation is it this higher being if you don't know then let's talk about the creation and see who can actually create such a creation can this creation come from absolute nothingness <coughs> and the answer is actually no nothingness cannot create anything nothingness itself doesn't have the power to do anything because it doesn't exist nothingness is the absence of everything so this universe could not have come from nothingness does that make sense I'm not talking about religion at all. I'm just using human reason. You are human, I'm human. You have brains, I have a brain, and we are trying to engage with each other with this reason and see whether. You see, when you go to work and study, you use reason. The job that you're going to go for next job, if you're ever going to go for one, you'd be using your reason. Does it say good salary? Is it a good company? Good reputation? Is it some. You'll be looking at all of these positives and you will try to avoid the negatives. You'll be using reason. You would reason in everyday life. So there's no fault in using reason because you do that anyway in your everyday life. The clothes that you wear, the food that you're going to eat, the places that you're going to live in, you always use reason. You want to use the reason to get the best out of it. Use the reason and say, this universe, could it come from nothingness? And I just gave you what this nothingness is. So can it come from nothingness? No religion attached here. Nothing to do with religion. It's the understanding about something as opposed to nothing. And something emerging from nothingness. Well, I'll add Maori them, okay? There is a creation story. And it's completely different to any religious context or religious story that was told. There's a creation story. What is that? So, Go on. In Māori Dam, we do come from nothingness. In Māori Dam, we do come from nothingness. So there's darkness, and then one of the gods, you know, all his siblings, his parents, they're together. And then out of the nothingness, he puts his legs up between his mother and father, separates them, and it comes to life. You said one of the gods. Already. No, so there you, was already something, not, not other than nothing. She said one of the gods. Yeah. So did that one of the gods exist before this nothingness? Well, that's what I mean. They call so, it nothingness. And that's why I said to you, it depends on how you view... But it was a nothingness that brought it. But it was a nothingness that brought this universe. It was this god. But like I said, it depends on the person's view that you're asking what the idea of nothingness is. Because to Māori, darkness is nothingness. Yeah, but I explain what nothingness is. Yeah, but that's you can... your idea of nothingness. Okay. When somebody says, oh, this is a banana. Someone can say that it's a banana. But in real life, this is not a banana. So we are trying to be real in our understanding of reality. So if somebody says nothingness, we can't just say, oh, nothing, nothingness means 20 kilogram weight of a weight. That's not nothingness. They can define it like that, but that definitely is not nothingness. So we have to have a common ground in which we understand the reality as reality is, rather than someone's faulty description of reality. So if in your belief system someone described this umbrella is nothingness, I would say it's a faulty description. Well, who's to say that? And I'm not saying that, you know, I believe this or I don't believe this. Our ancestors can be wrong. Who's, who's to say that back in the time of the creations, that nothing, the word nothing, or the idea of nothing, didn't have a different meaning? Then it was nothing, then it was something else. Yeah, we are using the word nothing as understood yeah, by but nothing. That's the idea of nothing today. Who's to say that nothing didn't mean something else? Yeah, so it was something else then. So, so we have to be really clear in the words we use. If they meant 
nothing as something, then we would call, they didn't say that was nothingness, it was something. So that means whatever concepts they have, we have to take it as it was. So if they believe nothingness was something, then it wasn't nothing. Well, it wasn't nothing according to today's language. It wasn't nothing in terms of reality. That's what I'm saying. Reality. Look, language must be in conformity with reality. Otherwise, you can believe that you are actually now floating in space. You can believe in whatever you like, but that's not the reality. You're asking, you're asking the question of nothing to a girl who was raised on the idea of nothing being the idea of nothing, meaning meaning lack of life. But I explain what I mean by nothingness. I'm not referring to your cultural understanding, your religious understanding of nothingness. But you also asked me to agree or explain something based on your idea. Of no, based on the understanding that you and I can both have now based on the reality. Well, not really, because of, we're not understanding it. Do you not live in the real world today? Do you not, do you not live what in the real world? In, the world today? in this real world, nothing, as I described, is absence of everything. Can you not work on that definition? Or do you say, oh, this is nothing? Oh, this is nothing. Oh, this is nothing. Yeah, you get confused. Well, it's just like, it's just like saying, then words have no meaning it's, then. It's just like saying, yeah. oh, you might, somebody, you might, well, it's uh, spirit like, means cabbage. It's just like when it says love, it's, love means potato. It's just like saying if somebody, the words have no meaning then. It's just like saying if somebody says something mean to you and you don't let it affect you, you're like, oh, it's nothing. No, no. Your partner earlier on says we need to speak with love and spirit and so on. Imagine somebody, love to them means potato, spirit means cabbage. Then you will say like, what are you talking about? I have no understanding what it means. The words that we use in any interaction, any discussion, we must know what they mean. I'm speaking to you in English, but I cannot transform, use a word. <coughs> Imagine the same word is existing in my language. I'm trying to mean that word and, I, and you think, oh, when I say me, you think it means me, mean I but actually I mean, mean something else. Then we can't have a communication. The communication will be failure. So we are using a model of communication for verbal language and non-verbal language, as you can see my hands are moving and so on, so that we understand each other, understand the reality as it is. So I am saying, you know what reality is. The reality there is something and opposed to that there's nothing. This definition is not hard to grasp. It's hard to believe. Where nothingness means a concept in which there was absolutely nothing. From that, your partner agrees with me, and you perhaps, when you think about it a bit more, you will agree that from that kind of nothingness, nothing will come. Something will not come from it. Because it doesn't have any energy. It doesn't have any own existence. So it cannot bring in anything out of it. So this universe cannot come from such a nothingness, if I describe what that nothingness is. So it must be either always there, or it was brought into existence by something else. We, you and I believe that this universe couldn't have been always there for, for various reasons we can go into. So it was brought into existence someone who has the ability and the power to bring to existence. Does that make sense? Okay. Agreed. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a, a really ridiculous argument to this, okay? Try. Let's talk about molecules, okay? okay. <laughs> Let's take it back to like molecules. Yeah. Everything that you're saying to me right now, and 90% of what you're saying, even 95% of what you're saying, I agree with, okay? okay. Chances are. Well, let's go to atoms, let's go to molecules. You're telling me to define everything by what you're saying, your beanie, your jacket, these microphone receivers, but they're all made of atoms. They're all made of molecules right so these things have been formed into shapes we then define these shapes we then apply purpose to these shapes we use these shapes in different ways now depending on your intellect depending on your ability to grasp concepts may define your ability to understand or accept the concept right so you're a smart guy clearly and you've been able to grasp some very complicated ideas not everyone's like that. Some people have very simplistic ways of thinking. Some have very simplistic lifestyles. And so their ability to define the things that you define are not the same. And they don't see them the same. And so though you like to uh, state the world as if it's one finite, all-inclusive, we all know the same thing world that we live in, it is not that. We all have different intellect, we have different lives, we have different lifestyles, we have different minds. 
So how I define something, though you may disagree with it, mm. it's all made of the same thing. It's all made by the same material that God gave us to play with. But there's a common basic truth that we all have access to. Right. That's my point. And I engage in a discussion on that very common basic truth that is accessible to everyone. So when I find someone is really, um, you know, blinded by whatever that, for example, they're not open to reason, open to any kind of, you know, understanding, okay, spiritual or analytical, as you were saying, then I would not be able to have any communication, any discussion. But if I see that people are, as a human being, using their intellect, the God-given faculty of rationality, then I say, all of us have access universally to this basic truth using this tool. And this is what I'm appealing to always. Right. This tool is acceptable to you, to, uh, accessible to you, to me, to your partner and everyone else. Right. It's not I'm trying to use a mathematical equation to describe the reality and so on. I'm using things as best as I can. This is where I might fail sometimes, as you're saying, to, to engage with the people to that level of basic truth about the reality. Right. That there is a creator, that we should fulfill our obligation to this creator because we're going to die one day and that's not the end of it. We will be resurrected again and asked, how did you spend your life? Did you really fulfill the reason I created you for? Or did you just waste your time looking after money and wealth and fame and whatever? Or did you just totally was too lazy looking after your own ego and oneself? So this basic truth about the essential destination that we are all going to go to, you might have different ideas, but it's something that we can all resonate with. But there is this life and we are going to die one day. That's for a fact. You, you might have different kind of beliefs, but in this reality, you and I was not going to live more than 150 years. No human being is able to live more than 150 years. So as we die, where do we go? This is where we say, this is where I, I want to point this out. The human mind has its limits of its speculative understanding. The human mind surrenders to revelation from our creator. Our creator being just and wise and merciful gives us guidance from himself to understand who he is, who we are, why we're created here, what's going to happen after we die. And that's why he sent prophets and messengers. Oftentimes he gives them books, revelations, guidance and tells them, this is what you're supposed to do. Follow this and you'll be successful in this life and the next life. As Muslims, we try to share this message, this truth with everyone else. It's up to the people what they believe in. Because at the end of the day, you'd have to account for your belief and your actions in the day of judgment that we believe in, that every will be, everyone will be accountable for what they have done. No one's going to get away. Do you think those people who have done so much wrong, so much injustice, and they die like a king, they'll get away? No. Every single human being will be resurrected to account for what they believe and what they did. In that day, God, our Creator, the one and only, the absolute sovereign, will be the judge and He will judge them fairly. No injustice will be done on that day. This is the message that we are trying to convey and share to the people. And we're saying Islam is that message from our Creator from day one of the creation of human beings. All the prophets and messengers in the past, they brought the same message. Jesus brought the same message. Moses brought the same message. So when we talk about Abrahamic faiths, they brought the same message of submission to one and only creator. We call that submission, the state of submission, Islam. That's what the Arabic word means. Your sincere, willing submission and surrender of your will to the will of this one true creator. Whoever does this, we call them in Arabic, a Muslim, a submitter. That is what we are saying is what is the purpose of your life to be to be a muslim to live a life of justice and fairness and kindness and so on and then you die and you have the guarantee of god the promise of god that you will be in a life of eternal happiness eternal joy you'll be with your companions with your partner with your family with your children if you if they all believe in this this is the success the ultimate success of our own existence success is not getting you know some momentary happiness here and there with marijuana and hashish and ganja whatever success is being saving ourselves from the eternal punishment of hellfire and entering ourselves 
in the ultimate abode of heaven, paradise, in which there is no grief, there is no sorrow, there is no pain, there is no misery. All there is is contentment, bliss, felicity, peace, joy, happiness. That is what we should be aiming for. And this is what we're trying to share. So if I failed in any way in conveying this simple message to you, this is my failure. But at least if you, as you are, can take the opportunity yourself, open up the Quran, have a read about it and see whether it resonates with you. Read the biography of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the final messenger of our creator. See if his message, his guidance from God that he exemplified in his own life resonates with you. And if you think this is the truth, all you have to do is sincerely accept it. That's all. So I'm going to say this. I learned more from you in the last five minutes than in the past hour, okay? You, you I learned from you to how to, to speak to you in your terms. You're, tried. You're communicating on the level that I'm asking you to communicate on now. I tried. And I appreciate it. I tried and I appreciate for teaching me that. <laughs> so I learned something from you. I tried to put it in practice and I'll try to put, improve, um, God willing, inshallah, more but to understand each person in the level to speak to my them. My goal is not to prove you wrong. And I know your goal is not to prove, well, my hope is not to prove me wrong. To, to establish the truth. Because whatever I say is not me, okay? It's just the things that I'm taught. Yeah. And whether it's true or not. We want to all accept the truth. We'll find out one day. Do you right? agree on that? We all should accept the we'll truth and follow the truth. Yeah, but, one day we all find out. That's for sure. But we don't want to be in a position where we, it was too late to find out that we were on the wrong path. Like that's I said, why the, the last five minutes, you found that place that you're supposed to go to. And that's... That's when I really started to hear it. Yeah. Thank you. And I appreciate it. Thank you. You take care, man. Okay. Thank you, brother. Thank you. <laughs>